Hi, I'm Wesley Burke and welcome to Ireland's Military Story. We're here today in the National Museum of Ireland, Collins Barracks, Dublin, for the 90th anniversary of the formation of the Reserve Defence Forces. Cortes of Bado! Ivigit! Cortes! Beside me here is Commandant Lara Joy from DFHQ. Now, Lara is a reservist for 32 years and formerly the curator here in the National Museum of Ireland. So, Lara, tell us, what has your career been like in the reserve and uh, what are you up to now? Um, at the moment, I'm working uh, in DFHQ in the reserve um, directorate. Uh, but prior to that, I've had a series of staff positions in the press office and in uh, two brigade. Uh, and prior to that, I was a, an artillery officer um, in the 1st Air Defence Regiment. Um, as with most people in uh, the reserve, uh, you start off as a, at the bottom as a private, or in my case, a gunner, and you work your way up through the ranks. Uh, eventually, after 10 years, I was commissioned. And since then, I've had a kind of a varied career um, in charge of radars, of guns, um, as uh, an operational role, and then more into staff, uh, staff roles over the last kind of uh, 10 years. Okay. And so, why join the reserve? Uh, for me, it was always an interest in all things military, uh, military history, and um, if you're going to have a, an interest like that, uh, serving the reserve is a very practical way of learning about armies, um, and at the same time, uh, having a, a civilian job and kind of having outside interests. So, for me, it kind of fitted something I wanted to do, um, and uh, in a way, after about 20 years, it kind of my both careers collided, in the sense I became a, the uh, curator of military history at the National Museum and then also my military role, which uh, is unusual probably in the reserve. Um, but in my case, it was just it was one of those things that happened. So it was nice. And I, what I'd learned in the reserve helped me do my day job. And then working in the day job helped me to, to work in the reserve. So that, that doesn't happen too often, but it did happen in that case. So tell us a, a brief history of the reserve itself. So we're here, at, it is the 19th anniversary. They were formed in 1929, but you actually studied the, the early, early reservists yeah, for your uh, masters, isn't that correct? For my masters in 20th century history, I, I did uh, looked at the reserves from the 1920s and 1930s. Um, it was a year; it's known as the, the decade of experiments because there is no one full reserve. So, in 1929, um, the first what we'd call militia unit or weekend warriors, which is probably the term that you'd hear in America, 
is a volunteer reserve um, and they're based in this barracks, Collins Barracks, and also on the south side in Portobello Barracks or Cal Brew Barracks as it's now known. Um, and then in the 1930s, the Fianna, Fianna Fáil government were in power. They decided to go for a bigger, more nationwide force called the Volunteer Force. And in a way, it was to encourage their supporters to join up into the army, and it worked in many ways. Um, and then during the emergencies we call World War II, uh, the local defence forces were created, which is probably the largest reserve we've had. Well over 100,000 uh, reservists served then. Um, and that led then into the FCA, or Forest Custantola Tool, which was in existence for well over uh, 50 years. Um, and at its peak had about 35,000 reservists. Um, so reserves over the 90 years have kind of um, uh, grown large, grown small. And at the moment now, we're back to being fully integrated into the, the uh, regular army. Um, it's known as the Army uh, Reserve, and then you have the Naval Service Reserve. Um, it's a lot smaller, it's about 1,500 uh, reservists at this stage. So it's ebbed and flowed over the 90 years. There's been many versions of it. Um, but in many ways, it's probably, uh, for its future role, um, it's probably a good place to be. It's now merged back into uh, the regular army um, and uh, that benefits it. Um, and it also, I think, feels it benefits the regular army at the same time. Okay, great stuff. Thank you so much. And thanks for your service. No worries, thank you. Okay, so I'm here with Corporal Brendan McCarthy from 2nd Cavalry Squadron in Calabrua. Now, Brendan here is a reservist. So, Brendan, what is life like as a reservist in 2 Cavalry Squadron? For myself, it's very, um, very busy. We do a lot of stuff, like we do stuff here like parades. We do a lot of uh, days where we're training, because as, obviously as a cavalry unit, we have to train for possibility of war. So we train for the likes of uh, attacking enemy positions. Um, defending a reconnaissance, a very big thing we do is OPs, which are observation posts, which involve going out to the countryside without being spotted, moving to a, a position to overlook an enemy position, move in, create a little, basically a hole, hide in that hole without being seen by the enemy, get all the inf information we can out of them, and then extract out of there. But another side for me, out of the res or, or two cab or the reserve, is uh, the sporting side, because I'm really into sports. And a big thing I'm into is, well, <laughs> a number of things I've, I'm big into is the running, the orienteering, the rock climbing, the adventure racing, and so all the stuff I got out of by joining the reserve. Okay, great. Now the key thing here is you are a reservist. Correct. So you're not a full-time soldier. No. Or a trooper, as they say in the cab, isn't that correct? Well, troopers, <laughs> troopers are the ordinary ranks, and then the up, next off that is the NCO, so ah, I'm a corporal, okay, so okay. NCO. And then up beyond that is the, the officers, of course. Oh, very good. So what do you do in I suppose the real world or in your everyday life? Uh, in my real world, uh, in the real world, I have a much more boring job. I work as a software developer for a company called Sage. You probably see their or heard their ads on, yep. on the radio and seen it on TV. And in that job, I just sit at my desk, type away. You know, it's quite, it's quite okay, but it's not very physical, it's very boring. And to compensate for that, I do this stuff in, the, in their army or army reserve. So it's, I get one side is very mental, sitting at a desk, the other side is very physical, getting out and doing stuff. Okay, so for anyone out there, why join the reserve? Well, I joined the, well for myself, um, you got, a lot of people just have like a job and then they have their family. And for me, the reserve gave, gave me uh, a lot more great opportunities. It got me to see a lot more of uh, the world, a lot more of Ireland. It got me into, as I said, it got me into uh, orienteering. Like at the moment, I'm the over 45s Irish orienteering championship, or champion. I wouldn't have got into that if it wasn't for the army. Uh, beyond that, I got into rock climbing, which is a great way to get out and into the, um, into the countryside and learn how to you know, push yourself. Um, there's been one or two accidents where I've injured myself, but I've enjoyed the experience overall. Also got into the running. Like, if I hadn't joined the Army Reserve, I would never have been, I'd be, in some ways, I'd love to have a twin. A twin who hadn't joined the Army Reserve and, and myself who had joined. You compare yeah, ourselves. Yeah. And I'd say if I hadn't joined, I would be a, a, a little fat guy sitting at home on the computer watching TV, wishing I had done something. But instead, I joined the Army Reserve yeah. and I got out there and done a lot of stuff that I'm glad that I wish I'd done when I was in my 20s, but I got to do my 30s and 40s. And it's given me, you know, in a lot of ways, it's given me a real sense of fulfillment. I really get a lot out of what I've uh, achieved here. Great stuff. Now, thank you so much. It is a huge commitment and well done for you for putting in all that time and uh, all your free time. Not all my free time, but a lot of free time. A lot of free time into the Army Reserve. 
I am going to bring you over now because I do. You are the you, the guys here are. Uh, you have some bikes with you. That's correct. So if that's okay, yep. we'll go over and have a look at uh, what bikes you have, and you yes. might maybe tell us what they are and what well, they're all about. I can tell you something about the bikes, but the real bikers are there, and they'll tell you ah, all okay. the all the interesting stuff about the motorbikes Great stuff. and what they what they do with them. Cheers. Thanks very much. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We've now moved on to the infantry element of the Reserve Defence Forces. Now the infantry make up a large element of the Army Reserve. Beside me here is Private Aoife Kiernan from the 27th Battalion. Aoife, thanks so much for talking You're to us. You're very welcome. So, the infantry, reservists, and I believe you've just finished your science degree. I did, yes. Yeah. I've just handed in my thesis in at Lone Institute of Technology there uh, on Thursday. So I'm delighted to have that over and now I can spend more time doing the infantry, Excellent. the reserve and army. Okay, beside me here now is Corporal Dara Garvin, also from Two Cavalry Squadron. Now he's going to explain to us about the escort of honour, and it, this is a role that the reservists now do since 2015. Since 2015. Thank you very much. Okay, so. What are the bikes and what's the role of the Escort of Honour? Okay, so the, the bikes are 700cc Honda DeVilles. They're uh, committed to service in 2008 and they're shortly about to exit service and there will be replacements very shortly. Um, we have two types of bikes in the two cavalry squadron, uh, well three types of the off-road. We have uh, Honda CBF 600s, uh, which are the training fleet, and then we have the Escort bikes here. So the Escort bikes are, are only used to escort heads of state and for the president. Um, the Presidential Escort of Honour. So it's a big honour for us as reservists to be able to take part in this kind of, this kind of uh, ceremonial duty. Now, the Escort of Honour could take place any day of the week, couldn't it? Like, it so does, you, you yeah. could be called upon at any time to do that. Yeah, well, what usually happens is they, they know in advance when the escorts are going to be and then they'll put out a uh, word to our, to our chain of command and ask uh, who's available for whatever, whatever's coming up, you know. So any, any of the escorts on the weekend, usually we can do more often than not. But uh, today, like today's a Tuesday, we took time off work to come in and... Uh, and, and lend a hand. Very good, very good. Thank you so much for doing that. How many bikes would you have in an escort of honour? I'll have to check because there's two troops, there's a front troop and a rear troop and there's also three officers on a captain's escort. Um, so there's a captain's escort which the full, the full squadron is out and then there's a lieutenant's escort which is smaller. So the lieutenant's escort will be predominantly for escorting uh, ambassadors to um, to Arsene Neutron to give their credentials in and things like that and the full captain's escort is for escorting the president. And what's it like out there on it's, the bikes? It's great. It's a great feeling. It's, there's a lot of pressure, a lot of prep goes into it. Um, for us, we have to prepare our uniforms and our bikes the day before. Um, so we'll come in after work and um, we'll, we'll work on the bikes and work on the uniforms. You could be two or three hours between getting the bike up to scratch and getting the uniform up to scratch. Um, and then on the, the morning, it's, they're long days. You're in early and you're, you're working all day. Um, and uh, yeah, but it's great when you're outside the arse and you're, you're, you're doing the job, it's great. It's a great feeling, you know, and when you're driving down Chesterfield Avenue in, in three strengths, it's great, it's a great feeling, yeah. That's really cool, that's really yeah, cool. Yeah, it is. Now, you're also an instructor on these bikes. That's right, yeah, I did my instructor's course two years ago. So, um, yeah, I was trained in, in-house by reserve uh, um, instructors, and then uh, I did my instructor's course two years ago down the DFTC with the CAF school. Yeah, it's great. So, I'm now teaching the skills that I was taught through the unit, so it's great to carry that on. Great. And keep doing Thank you so much. Not up. Thanks very much. Cheers.